It's doubtful that any of these local actors will end up in Hollywood because of this production. But Andy Warhol once said that in this day and age, everyone is destined to be famous for at least one minute. And when this show is aired on December 13th, over 50 million people are expected to watch it. And if that doesn't make them famous, at least for one minute, then nothing will. Bruce Rader, Area 10 Eyewitness News in Williamsburg. Bruce, we feel very good about uh, what took place in these governor's races across America in the first week of November 1978. According to Governor Dalton, this year's host, the purpose of this meeting is to give the governors an opportunity to discuss related problems. But there are also several Republican presidential hopefuls here. Governor John Thompson of Illinois and Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee. And there's no question that the rest of the governors here have a big influence on local party delegates. And their opinions will be weighed heavily when it comes time for the next presidential elections. I agreed to take on this foolhardy story before I met old Grasshopper here, a five-year-old Brahma bull who, by the way, weighs 1,650 pounds. The object of my Walter Mitty encounter is to get on this fella's back using only one hand to hold myself on. Now, since I know nothing of bull riding other than what I've seen at the rodeo, I solicited the help of a couple of pros. Why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, what's going to happen to me when I get on this board? Okay, you want to slide up there and get just as far up on your hand as you can. Yeah, because it gets you back off, you know, your rope, he's going to throw you off. You need to get right up on your hand and uh, turn your feet out, turn your toes out this way and get a hold with your feet. You know, you got to ride them with your feet, you got to have a hold of them. How many seconds do I have to stay uh, on it? Well, the requirement is eight. You're supposed to ride them eight seconds, you know, to get a qualified ride. Uh, so it'd be eight seconds the first time, too. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I guess that this is the point where I really began to get frightened. The cowboys placed my gloved right hand under a rope tied snugly around the bull while I slid up towards the hump and half listened to other general instructions. Right about here, the bull, Mr. Grasshopper I was calling him at this point, began getting pretty nervous, but his nerves were nothing compared to mine. Finally, the seconds began to feel like an eternity. I told the cowboys I was ready, they let the gate fly, and I don't remember much of what happened until I hit the ground. I was told that when the bull finally bucked me to get up and run for the nearest fence. To this piece of advice, I listened and obeyed. Yeah, yeah, how'd I do? Uh, I feel all right, I hurt my wrist a little bit. How'd it go? Rolling good. Did I? Out there, yeah. Kind of got your feet behind you and kind of jerked you down, but <laughs> rubbing pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty hard. Yeah, that right too. When you got, you got some gone. <laughs> I was gone. I'll tell you, I jumped up over there, went right for the fence. I got kicked. Yeah, my leg is coming yeah, off. Yeah, this back foot yeah. that hurt, and I hurt my. Yeah, that's your glove. Yeah, I hurt my wrist real bad. It's because I was holding on so tight. Yeah, it works on it. Yeah. You, know, you got a lot there. You got about 1,800 pounds of bull working against it. Yeah. yeah. It was good, but it was fun. Some I always wanted to do. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. You bet. You bet. Appreciate Thank it. You. Oh, ow. <laughs> December 16, 1980, Area 10 Eyewitness News, with Joe Rubin, meteorologist Jim Smith, and Bruce Rader with sports. baseball dispute today. Bruce Rader has all the latest. Oh, Bob, the story just broke about, what, three and a half hours ago. Uh, federal Judge Henry Worker has ruled that the baseball owners are innocent of charges that they bargained unfairly with the players, so the request for an injunction that would have postponed the baseball strike was denied this afternoon. So everything now points to the players going on strike, and I would say it'll probably happen in the next 48 hours. Now, the players still feel that the owners are pushing for the strike. The owners do have insurance in case a strike is called. We have been on the phone to New York and Washington this afternoon, and it's hard to get any kinds of statements since the decision was just announced uh, late this afternoon. So all I can really say right now is that tonight may be the last night of Major League action. Until when? We really don't know. But unless a miracle happens soon, I would predict a player strike within the next 48 hours, and hopefully we'll have more on this story tonight at 11. 
The proposed strike puts a little added pressure on Philadelphia Phillies first baseman Pete Rose. Now, Rose needs but two hits to break the all-time National League hit record set by the great Stan Usual. Last night, the Phillies just pounded the Houston Astros 10-3 in Philly. And even though the Phillies are playing extremely well, most of the fans were only interested in Rose. Let's take a look at the highlights from Philadelphia. Pete Rose moved to within one hit of tying Stan Musial's National League hitting record last night. The first one coming in the third and the second in the eighth. And the crowd at the vet responded with a standing ovation as Rose came back out of the dugout. Mike Schmidt got the Phillies going in a five-run third inning with an opposite field triple. Rose and Matthews scored. Then Dick Davis drove Schmidt home with a single. That made it four to one Phillies. Larry Boa got some help from left fielder Jose Cruz with this single and a two base error as the ball got away from Cruz. Six to one Philadelphia. In the sixth, Bob Boone hit his third home run of the year and the route was on. Marty Bystrom, the winning pitcher, Joe Necro, the loser. Final score again, Philadelphia 10, Houston 3. But until the strike is officially called, if it is, let's remember we still have a full schedule of games on tap for tonight, and we even have a couple of games this afternoon. The Chicago Cubs, the worst team in the majors, they're trying to play some quick catch-up ball. They swept a pair from the San Francisco Giants, completing a suspended game from yesterday with a 2-1 to win. And then in the second game this afternoon, the Cubs also came through, winning that one 7-4. to And in the American League, a late afternoon game, it's still going on. The Baltimore Orioles lead the Oakland and A's two to nothing that game in the third inning. You know, back to the strike talk for a moment. If a strike does come, it will not affect the minor league baseball leagues, meaning the Peninsula Pilots and Tidewater Tides should get a lot of attention. Speaking of the Tides, they received bad news last night when their leading hitter, Gil Flores, was called up to New York to replace the injured Joel Youngblood. Now the Mets say late this afternoon that they won't add Flores to the major league roster, so if the strike does come, Gil will be sent back home. The Tides are only a game and a half out of first place in the International League behind uh, defending champion Columbus, behind the Tides, Syracuse, Rochester, and Richmond. And for our guests from out of town and our local anglers, if you think today was a bad day for fishing in Tidewater, wait till you hear about tomorrow. Our fishing computer shows that from 2 to 4 a.m. is really the only good fishing time at all in the Tidewater area tomorrow. The rest of the day, forget it. Just a plain bummer. Stay inside, watch the soaps. I mean, it's even too hot for the fish out there, Bob. And also, we're going to talk to Jack Nicholas tonight about the U.S. Open at 11. All right, that was bad news. We have bad news about bus fares coming up. Nancy Lieberman and Ing Nissen. No excuse for not winning with them, but no excuses were needed. Stanley took the pressure and the titles. And she's been doing it ever since. Two national titles, coach of the year twice, and check out this record, 180 wins and only 24 losses. But you know, a lot goes into it, more than a lot of us are willing to give. But why are the wrestlers in Virginia supposed to be so much better than wrestlers in other states? Well, longtime Granby coach Billy Martin told me it's because the wrestlers here are more scientific. All right, let's put Bruce on the spot tonight. Who do you think is going to be in the World Series this uh, year? In the National League, it's going to be the Dodgers. The Dodgers. In the American League, it's not going to be the White Sox, Diane. It's going to be the Orioles. <laughs> you think so? Bet on it. I will. All right. I will. It all starts tonight, the Major League Baseball playoffs. The Los Angeles Dodgers host the Philadelphia Phillies in the first game of the best of five National League Championship Series. Both teams got a quick early morning workout today and then took the rest of the afternoon off. The Phillies will send 15-game winner Steve Carlton to the mound, while the Dodgers will pin their hopes on left-hander Jerry Royce. The Dodgers, of course, are in the series for the fifth time in 10 years, but they have a different look. Gone, names like Steve Garvey, Davey Lopes, but they've been replaced by new, younger players like Mike Marshall and Steve Sachs. Dodgers, and um, I don't really know what to expect. I've always watched it on TV. You know, being a, a youngster growing up in Chicago, you always watch the All-Star game and the playoffs in the World Series, and you just don't think that you'd ever be there. I feel great. You know, this is uh, it's going to be a, a great experience for me, and we've worked so hard this year just to get to this point, and, you know, we're very excited. The Phillies, a charter member of the National League, uh, well, they're about 100 years old now, and they're in the playoffs for the fifth time in eight years. But this season, the Phils haven't played very well against L.A.
I think that we were playing badly every time we faced them, but I, but I have to say that the Dodger played excellent ball against us. Their pitching was good, uh, outstanding. We hit 186 against them, so that isn't much to brag about. Uh, everybody told me they were a poor defensive ball club. I think they made seven errors, and they all looked like Brooks Robinson out there to me. We really had nothing to get us excited, uh, to get us uh, to be as good as we were. And uh, I think from that point on, uh, our team came together. But this is a series, and uh, they're going to see a different ball club than, than what they last saw. The American League playoffs get underway tomorrow afternoon in Baltimore, where the Orioles host the Chicago White Sox. The weatherman says there's a 40% chance of rain in Baltimore tomorrow afternoon. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that. The Orioles plan to start Scotty McGregor, who's won 18 games this year. The White Sox will counter with the fat boy, Lamar Hoyt, a 24-game winner. That should be a great series. The Orioles against the White Sox, I'll be there, and we'll try to give you a different look from the field and the locker room throughout the week here on the Daily News. And don't forget, the game tonight, as well as the Orioles series, will be right here on TV 10, so uh, we'll, be we'll be watching. Thank you, Bruce. We're right back after this time now. So next week, the Crabbers will go to Charlottesville, where they will take on T.C. Williams, the number four ranked high school team in the nation for the Virginia State Championship. It will be the toughest test of the year so far for the Crabbers, who feel defense is the best offense. At Richmond Stadium, I'm Bruce Rader for TV10 Sports. Bruce, a change in the ranks for the Yanks. Oh, hey. Here. Hey. Nice climb there. <laughs> As if you wouldn't think that it would happen, huh? Mm. Yankees owner George Steinbrenner did it again. The inevitable. He fired manager Dallas Green. That makes 17 managerial changes since George bought the team in 1973. New York is currently in sixth place, seven and a half games back of the first place Orioles. The new Yankee manager, a former Yankee star, Bucky Dent, who's been managing the Yanks' top farm team, the Columbus Clippers. So Dallas Green is out. Bucky Dent is in. How long will Bucky last? Only George can tell. Other big news, the Chicago Bears traded quarterback Jim McMahon to the San Diego Chargers. The Bears will receive a draft choice from San Diego depending on how much McMahon plays. This means Mike Tomzak and Jim Harbaugh will fight for the starting Chicago job. McMahon will compete against uh, Charger quarterback Mark Malone, who used to play for the Steelers, David Archer, and Billy Joe Tolliver. Coming up Sunday at Scope, the IBF lightweight champion, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker from Norfolk, will meet the only man ever to beat him as a pro, former WBC champion Jose Luis Ramirez. On the line, Pete's IBF title and the vacant WBC title. Let me take you back to a year ago, March. Paris, France, Sweet P. Whitaker, in the opinion of most boxing experts, had apparently won this 12-round decision over Ramirez in Ramirez's hometown of Paris, France. When the outcome was announced, the judges awarded the fight to Ramirez. Ramirez. Since then, Pete won the IBF title, but he has never and will never forget that day in Paris. He fights Sunday. He's with us live tonight. Pete, you finally hey, get your rematch against Ramirez. I assume you're glad this fight is in Norfolk and not in Paris. Oh, of course, Bruce. You know I'm glad that the fight is here. And um, I'm sitting out here enjoying this great view of the Omni Hotel with a couple friends of mine I want to introduce. Uh, I have Mark Breland over here to my left along with Evander Holyfield, the real deals in town. I'm telling you. Yeah, and uh, now we've got we, some we, Olymp former Olympians and champions with us. Yeah, my, my Olympic buddies are here to support me. Melger's here, and along with the rest of the guys. And we're getting ready, and we're ready to do this, Bruce. All right, now in your last couple of fights, you have shown you can knock guys out, but I doubt you're going to try to slug it out with a guy like Ramirez. Well, Bruce, oh, the game plan is set, and uh, I'm not going to uh, exclude my Come on, my Pete, game give me plan. the scoop, man. <laughs> give you the scoop. <laughs> well, you want to scoop, Bruce? Here's the scoop, okay, for you. You know right. you're my lucky charm. We're going we're gonna to be banging Ramirez to the body, and we're going to be right in front of Ramirez as though we were in the Haugen's fight. Okay. So uh, the fans are going to get a hell of a show out there, and uh, everyone come on out. Okay, I'll see you Sunday, Pete. I'll be there with you, pal. Okay, Bruce. I'll All see right. you then. Thanks for being with us. All right. Sweet P. Whitaker, Sunday at Scope, 2 o'clock at All Starts. We'll be live from Scope on Sunday at 6. Looking forward to it. See you at 11. Okay. Live from the Fox 43 studio, this is the Fox 43 Sports Wrap with Bruce Rader, presented by GEICO. Tony Dungy says he should be benched. Pierre Garçon says he isn't as fast as he was last season, but Robert Griffin III says the knee is fine and he's ready to run if he has to. I'm Bruce Rader. Welcome to the Sports Trap Live on this Wednesday night. After losing miserably their first two games, the Redskins have a very important showdown coming up Sunday against the Detroit Lions at FedEx Field. 
That's a sports wrap on this Wednesday night. I'm Bruce Rader. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, coming up on Friday night in this time slot, the Old Dominion Football Show with Coach Bobby Wilder as he looks ahead to Saturday's game at home against the Citadel. Also, for local updates, we've got sports wrap Twitter alerts. That's Bruce Rader Sport. And visit my Bruce Rader Wavy TV webpage on Facebook. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.